Coming up, Fargo police are searching for a robbery and attempted murder suspect. And Sanford's president and CEO of the Fargo market is stepping down. Plus, a ceasefire has been announced between Russia and Ukraine, but Ukrainian officials say Putin has already violated that agreement. Valley News Live at 10 starts now. This is Valley News Live at 10. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. I'm Nishay Taylor. The Fargo Police Department say they are actively looking for a suspect in a robbery and attempted murder case that happened around 2 a.m. this morning in the 3100 block of North Broadway. Police are looking for 56 year old Fabian Henderson. Henderson currently has no permanent address. He's five, six. Five feet, six inches tall. Police have confirmed to Valley News Live that the suspect and the victim knew each other. Authorities also say if you see Henderson, do not approach him. Call 911 immediately. The snow and freezing rain has passed some of us for us right here in the valley this weekend. Summer is here now with a look on how who got hit the hardest this weekend. Summer. Thank you so much, Nache. It's hard to believe that we've been fairly quiet today as that severe weather and winter weather headlines did impact portions of the northern plains. But right now across our region, we're quiet, overcast temperatures in the teens and 20s, although it is breezy. Here's a look at satellite and radar tonight where we do have some light snow showers up in the Devil's Lake Basin. But the big story is down to the south and southeast winter impact headlines, and we've got severe weather and wind headlines even farther down to the south and southeast. Your hour by hour details on what to expect right here in the valley coming up in just a few minutes. Well, lucky for us, you know, it may have passed this, but the sun came out today, so that was a nice. Trip. Yeah, we got to keep the shovels in the garage. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> All right, thanks so much, Summer. Sanford CEO and president of the Fargo market is stepping down. A hospital spokesperson confirmed to Valley News Live that Brian Nermo has decided to step away from his duties as CEO. In a statement, Nermo says, quote, as I start a new chapter in my life and look back at the past 13 years at Sanford Health, I can't help but feel blessed to be a part of all we've accomplished as an organization. Tiffany Lawrence, the current VP of Finance, will take over as interim president and CEO. Ukrainian and Russian officials announced a temporary ceasefire in two Ukrainian cities. The ceasefire is meant to allow for civilian evacuation, but Ukrainian officials say Russia has already violated that agreement. Here's more. Ukrainian officials have paused plans to evacuate citizens from the besieged cities of Mariupol and Volnovaha, citing ongoing Russian fighting, devastating news for Ukrainians who say their families are trapped inside the city. They haven't heard from them in days. I spoke to one woman who said the last time she spoke with her mother, her mother told her that she was positive with COVID-19 and needed medicine, and then all communication was cut. She doesn't know what happened next. No word on when plans to evacuate citizens will commence if there will be a pause in fighting. Meanwhile, in the city of Kherson today, despite the Russian occupation and terms laid out by the Russian military that only two people maximum at a time can be together on the streets, thousands showed up to protest the Russian military presence railing against the occupation in a tremendous act of defiance. The State Department is advising Americans still in Russia to leave the country immediately. The State Department updated their travel advisory for Russia as of today, listing several reasons for the update, including the unprovoked invasion of Ukraine, a potential for U.S. citizens to be harassed by Russian government security officials and, quote, arbitrary enforcement of local law. A two-time Olympic gold medalist and WNBA All-Star has reportedly been arrested in Russia on drug charges. According to the Russian news agency TASS, Brittany Griner was taken into custody at the Moscow airport in February. Customs agents allegedly found vapes with liquid cannabis or hash oil in Griner's carry-on, which is an illegal substance in Russia. Griner, who plays with the Phoenix Mercury in the U.S., spends her off-season playing for a Russian women's basketball team. The U.S. State Department says it stands ready to provide all appropriate counselor services for Griner. 
Ukraine President Volodymyr Zelensky met virtually with U.S. senators and House members today. The call with over 300 U.S. lawmakers and staff on both sides of the aisle took place this morning over Zoom. Multiple people who were on the call say that President Zelensky continued pressing for a no-fly zone in Ukraine, as well as more sanctions for Russia, specifically sanctions on energy and credit card access through Visa and MasterCard. Now, both credit card companies have since suspended their operations in Russia. U.S. Senator Kevin Kramer issued the following statement after a virtual meeting, after that virtual meeting specifically. He said, quote, today we heard a direct appeal from President Zelensky to, more, to do more aid the freedom-loving people of Ukraine in Vladimir Putin's war. At a minimum, the United States needs to be doing everything it can from a sanction standpoint to, to, to choke off any capital funding Putin's thuggery and aggression. Russian President Vladimir Putin said the Western sanctions of Russia were similar to a declaration of war. This video was shot by the Associated Press, which is under new restrictions imposed by the media in Russia. Putin made the comments today at a training facility for flight attendants at Russian airline Aeroflot. He said any attempt by another entity to impose a no-fly zone in Ukraine would be seen as entering the conflict. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has also asked NATO to impose a no a no fly zone in Ukraine, but NATO has rejected the request, claiming it would escalate the war beyond Ukraine. A Moorhead family who adopted three Ukrainian kids is scared for the friends they met and their kids left overseas. Adoption processes are being slowed down and could potentially be terminated because of the conflict between Ukraine and Russia. Valley News team's Alex Larson has more. This is so familiar to me. I can't believe it's getting bombed. The Lee family adopted Victoria, Ilya, and Tanya from an orphanage in Ukraine last year. And their parents say they are adjusting well to their lives in the U.S. I hope that they feel loved by us. And uh, I'm hoping that uh, we're going to see more and more positive changes in them in the future. But as the Russia-Ukraine war lingers, John and Luda say it can be hard to talk to their kids about what's going on. They do deserve to know the truth. You know, we tell them that this is what's going on right now because they deserve to know the truth. Friends have sent the siblings videos and pictures of what used to be their home. He said he was scared for his friends because he could feel, I mean, because they were saying they could feel how the earth, the ground was trembling every time the rocket was going out. The kids say they aren't surprised by what's happening because of the war back in 2014. She heard the bomb explosions and they were like five miles away from the orphanage. Even though they aren't surprised, they're still hurt. He said, I was simply sad. The family says the current conflict is slowing down the process for others to adopt children from Ukraine. Some of those documents are going to are going to expire and then you're going to have to resend them. So it just delays everything. And then given what's going on, what is it? What is it actually going to be like once everything's said and done? Will it still be the Ukraine or will we have something else there? And now they worry what will happen to the young kids who were forced to flee their orphanage. It's a lot of uncertainty. They're in Poland when the war is going to stop or whatever, they will be returning. And we don't know where the orphanage is going to be returning to. Will the children's home be still standing or not? In Moorhead, Alex Larson, Valley News Live. Later on Valley News Live at 10, a Airbnb hosts are being flooded with bookings from people all over the world. We'll tell you why next. And the overnight hours here in Fargo are continuing to look on the dry side. Perhaps a few flurries from time to time. Little if any accumulation and the breezy conditions stick around as well. Coming up in your hour by hour forecast and a look at the week ahead. We'll see when tonight's system finally moves out and when our next chance of snow moves into the region.